So you're talking about a brand new bike that's just coming out, this Touareg Rally. The other one that just came out that I think is interesting, and I think some of our listeners will, is the new, finally, KTM has released the 990. Oh my God, I am super excited about this. Finally, the 990 oh. RCR, they're calling it, which I think is a dumb name. I think they kind of missed the boat on the name. Yeah, like what? It should have just been the RC 990. I know, what's with this Not RCR? 990 RCR. Like the, anyway. What's our wrecker? <laughs> Get it together, oh, KTM. On, KTM. You had it. You're, and you, you were you spoiled it. right there in front you of you. Spoiled it. <laughs> I, so, maybe they don't want to like compromise the RC8C. Like they don't. Like, I don't know. I think but they RC990. The boat. Yeah. yeah, it sounded anyway. Yeah. Anyway, little complaints. Um, I've done a little bit of reading about the bike. It is interesting. It is not just a Duke 990 with some clothes on. Oh, cool. Because I haven't had time to look into it. It's a proper frame, different geometry, different swing arm, different like different everything that excuse me the subframe is totally different the everything about it is not the same other than effectively the same engine with a totally different tune what is interesting and i think a mistake oh again dying totally, to know totally because, unfounded because i've not even seen this right thing. right but the r9 and the rc 990 i'm just gonna call it what it is yeah, yeah. Or like is yeah. it 990 yeah it's a 990. 990 they call it a 990 yeah. yeah the rc 990 and the r9 have been the two motorcycles i've been looking forward to the longest yeah. so please tell right. me what you think so was a mistake because what they did is this is the actual gas tank on their bike it's all the way up front. It sits on top of the engine. It's a twin. It's a parallel twin, so it sits here, right? Right. Yeah. And then this, the whole subframe is all airbox, and so the intake for the airbox. This is interesting. I don't know if it's cool or not, but it's interesting. Basically, on the little scallops underneath the seat mm -hmm. are two almost. It almost reminds me of like a mid-engine supercar, where the intakes for the engine are actually just behind the doors, hmm. and it funnels in through these like scoops almost on either side into the airbox. That's how their subframe is designed. It's basically got these scoops built into it to pressurize the airbox. The weird thing about it though, is you put the really light thing in the far back under the seat and the really big heavy thing way up high in front of me, the rider, hmm. which is the opposite of what everything you're seeing in design right now with sport right. bikes. All the sport bikes you're seeing it's is- It's going away from that whole centralized mass, di mass yeah, idea. All of it is airbox is here and the tank basically is under your butt. Which is separate. smart, right? Like we talked about, I think on the last yeah. podcast about how clever and, that is. Uh, I've, I've had a Ninja 400, I've had an R3, like I've had these smaller track bikes before and they also were cheaper. And so they put the gas tank as a gas tank way up high above on top of the engine. Mm -hmm. And you can absolutely feel the difference between a full tank and a half empty tank. Right. 100% right. you can tell. For sure. What, on my CBR 600, which had a fuel tank that was almost vertical in the center here, I could hardly tell when the fuel was full or empty. It mm. hardly made a difference. Yeah, because it's in the center of the bike. And you think about, yeah. everyone thinks, and Honda played with this early on, they would put the gas tank actually in the belly pan. And when you... Again, this goes back to centralized mass. If you think about how a thing actually is going to change direction, yeah. it's not necessarily a wee blow. You kind of want it in the center so it'll pivot around the mass in the center, right? You're an engineer. You understand yep. this better than I do. So Honda's putting the gas tank all the way at the bottom in the belly pan, right? Because we thought lower weight is better, lower center and of gravity is better. In a car, that's true, yeah. And it was terrible. Yep. I, I think they abandoned it almost immediately. It was almost unrideable. Yep. And again, as the fuel load changed, yeah. the entire handling dynamic of the motorcycle changed. And so they've, they've done this with the airbox in the back. But what's so weird to me is that RC8C, which is a Kramer, Underneath. Right, yeah. That's all it is, a Kramer right. with some wings. And the Kramer stuff. has, the, I think, the gas tanks under the seat, isn't it? The subframe is the gas tank. That's what I thought, yeah. And so I'm just so baffled. Like, you had the blueprint. That's how did you, you had to do. How did you get it so backward? You had the blueprint. And so because the airbox is all the way in the back, it's not even close to the front of the bike, that little open scoop in the center air intake where there's a headlight, mm -hmm. and on, I think, the R9 or the R7, one of them, that comes out, and on the race body work, that's kind of ram air right. for the airbox. Yeah, yeah. It can't be on the 990. Because you have a gas tank in the way. Because the airbox is way in the back. You so can't you're, you're not going to be able to suck in enough air behind the rider's legs. Well, maybe maybe it can. I guess my, my point is, you designed the body work to have an air intake in the front that cannot be a ram air intake. Right. Because of the design. So it's like this like phony thing. Like, why not just make it a smooth thing with headlights underneath? 
I, I don't know. It just Why did you make a fake me. ram air? Because from what I understand is like the pressure on the front of the nose, the center, the center fr- of the nose is the highest. It's the highest pressure on the motorcycle. And that's why so many of these modern motorcycles, I center, think every MotoGP yeah. bike is doing this. There's a big hole right there. Yep. To, to get the most air pressure. To get the yeah. most air pressure. to Because all a motor yeah. is, a, all an ICE, internal combustion engine is, is an air pump. So the more air, that's why a, a pipe helps. That's why a free flow air filter helps. That's why all the, because all I want to do is get as much air into and out of that engine as quickly as I can to yep. generate the most amount of power. Yeah. So the fact that they designed that, like, all, I love the look of the thing. Oh, it's gorgeous. But I... I love when a I love when you see a race bike like I was just talking about the V4R. When you see a purpose built race bike that looks it's it only looks that way because that's functional. When you see something that is pseudo functional, it irritates me. Oh, it drives me. It puts nuts. me off. Yeah, yeah it totally it drives does. Me nuts. Yeah. So that irks me a little. This sort of like phony f- whatever you know race ish style. What is interesting though is if you go online and look. They softly announced, I think a real announcement's coming later, they are doing a 990 RCR track. Oh, okay. Why that's interesting is for decades, you could go down to your dealership and buy a motocross bike that you could pay some money, throw it in your truck, and go straight to the motocross track with. Right. Right? Yeah. Now, maybe it's not tuned perfect, whatever, but it's It's ready to go. It's so close. It's ready to go. Yeah, and for the rider, that's that's what they want to do. Why not sell the thing that they want? And so if you want, if you're a sport bike rider and you want to go to the track, I have multiple times gone and bought a brand new bike, taken it home, brand new bodywork, stripped all of it off, put it in boxes, yep, built it up as a race bike, and then gone to the track with it. They sell a track version, which is that. It is a full, no headlights, no taillights, no license plate, turn signal, all that stuff's gone. The electronics are set up for it. The bodywork is more almost like motocross bodywork. The whole set is something like five hundred bucks. Oh my gosh! Could you imagine? And it's and it's like easy. The bodywork on this motorcycle behind you was over a grand. I think yeah. it was twelve hundred dollars. Fiberglass, yeah, yeah, it, and yeah, with no paint. Yep. Right. It was it was gray fiberglass. Yep. Twelve hundred dollars for just the. Yep. Yeah, because you need a belly pan to catch his oil. If you're not familiar, yeah. like that's a big part of it. But the track one comes. You just buy it, and and if you smash it up and you need a new piece, you go to your KTM dealer and you order the panel you broke and he sends you a new panel and you're off you go. Oh, that would be amazing. 